Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Dark Unorthodox in the 15-minute pool in ICC. And true to his name, he has opened with a unorthodox move, B4, the orangutan on move 1. And I'll play D5 against that. It's my go-to against B4. Not going to try to do anything too fancy. Uh, now, I usually play the bishop out to F5. I think I played C6 here before, too. Maybe bishop G4 is also interesting. Um, actually, let's just play knight F6. Flexible move. We'll wait to see what to do with this bishop. I think I'll just play bishop f5. If I play bishop g4, it might give him a reason to play knight e5. Yeah, and then I'll play e6, hitting his pawn on b4. I never try to overthink it against these setups. I think it's best just to adopt something straightforward and not try to like play their game out of the opening. Because if this guy's playing the orangutan, orangutan he, um, he probably is used to people like trying to tackle it head on. Whereas if I just adopt some standard setup like this, it's completely fine for black. Uh, he plays a3. Usually they push b5, so a3 is a more restrained approach. I could go c5, but he'll end up with one extra center pawn. Hmm. I could play bishop to d6. Uh, I don't know. c5 is interesting, though. I'm kind of tempted by that move. To be quite honest, I feel like he's going to try to play c4 soon. Maybe on the next move. Nah, let's just keep it simple. We'll play bishop d6. If c4, I'll reinforce with c6. And we'll have d5 as kind of our, our head pawn, um, and we'll build around that. Just checking out his stats right now. So he has a peak 15 minute rating of 21 to 81. So he's very close to that. He actually achieved it earlier today, it looks like. Five minute rating of 23.72. So good player on our hands. He said, in his notes, he says, currently rated high 2000, low 2100 USCF. Okay, so he's a USCF expert. Um, let's play knight BD7. I might want to try for an early e5. He shuts that idea down. Now maybe here, just play h6, like expend one tempo to make sure that knight h4 doesn't win our bishop pair. We'll do that. The queenside situation remains unresolved. The tension is kept right now when he has the pawn on c4 and I have my pawn on d5. He's not going to take on d5. That would be unlikely. But he might push c5 and try to get a big clamp going. I'll just castle too. We'll leave it up to him to see what he wants to do with the pawn structure over here. Hmm. Maybe he can go a quick c5, bishop c7, b5, though. Possibly I shouldn't have allowed that, but he's not playing it that way. Knight e5. Okay. So trying to blockade the center. He might try to follow with f4. Makes sense to do that. I could take on e5. And maybe it's not such a big deal that I'm having to part with the bishop. I have to take with the bishop if I want to capture it all. Because taking with the knight, he would take, and he would be forking my two minor pieces. So maybe bishop takes, pawn takes, knight e8. Looks a little passive, but I don't think there's much he can do about that. Yeah, let's play that way. Could play knight e4 as well, but he might go f3 and chase my knight around. So I think I like just this. It's pretty solid. My knight's coming to c7. And again, we're building around the d5 pawn. e5 has potential to be weak in the long run. If he wants to defend it with another pawn, he has to play f4, and that involves concessions like weakening e3. So in the short run, I just want to get my knight to c7. Maybe I'll play an undermining move like a5. We'll see. Plays f4, okay. I wonder if he has plans to try to swamp me with his pawns, like playing g4 as a follow-up. I could play f6 right here. If I want to fight back. Doesn't seem necessary yet, though. a5 also could be played. Hmm, a5 is kind of interesting because uh, then... 
thinking I might be threatening to take and then trade rooks and then play queen b6. Let's try that. Poke and prod at his queen side. He's underdeveloped. He doesn't have this knight out yet, so that could create certain problems. The pawn structure for the respective sides is very much in flux right now. If g4, I'll probably play bishop h7, but I might take on b1. Not quite sure yet. Even after g4, bishop h7, he could play f5 and try to lock my bishop out, but he's taking some liberties with his e5 pawn then. Okay, he's going for a big clamp. He's going to try to lock down everything. What if I play b6 now, though? Maybe I can insist on opening this up. Let's do it. I just feel he's not quite prepared for this turn of events. Like if his knight was out and his queen and rook were connected, and maybe the knight could jump to a4 or something, reinforce, he might be in a better position to deal with this. Not calculating this a whole lot because I think it's uh, pretty low risk for me. I don't have a ton of weaknesses that he can exploit. I'm mainly trying to exploit his overextended structure. Because the problem is if I wait too long and just make standard moves, he might squeeze me with the bishop pair plus all this space. So if I want to fight back, it makes sense to do it now while the queen side structure is still shifting and he's underdeveloped. He could try to stick something on d4 to defend the c5 pawn. Either his bishop or his queen. If he sticks the bishop there, I can take on b4 and like deflect the bishop away. There's an issue he's going to face. He could put the queen there, but that just looks awkward. I don't think he wants to lead with his queen. He might, he might do that though. So let's say queen here. Do I take on c5 first? Or do I take on b4 first? Okay, it might be a moot point. Now I have another decision. Take on b6 or take on b4. If I take b6, bishop to d4 is probably going to be the answer. If I take b4, he might go b7. It's not a big deal, though. Hmm. Could also take on b6 with the knight. But I don't have too many good squares I can jump into with that knight. So if I take b4, and he plays b7, rook b8, he takes maybe queen b6 then? Maybe? Hmm, let's do it. We'll take that way. I think if I had taken with the queen, bishop, d4, and then he can decide if he wants to take on a5 or not. I just wasn't quite sure about that line. I think I'd rather him end up with the b pawn. Yeah, so now take on a1. And take on b6 next move. With the queen. If bishop d4, I win his b pawn. If queen d4, which I think he will play, I have a couple options there. One move I'm thinking about is just knight c7, just develop. Could also try c5. c5 pawn takes is a little bland, though. I think there's going to be simplifications in that case. It's also interesting to play bishop takes b1, aiming for... Um, Rook takes b1, c5, but if bishop takes b1, he might just insert the capture on b6. So quite possibly, I should just do this. Yeah, let's play it that way. Then my rook is ready to join the action on b8 or a8. He's still got some weaknesses. C6 is weak for me, but I feel like C6 is easier to hold than B4 and E3 are for him, respectively. 
I might want to take on b6 just to divert my knight and also clog up the b file. Because if he doesn't, maybe rook b8 and b4 is easier to attack. Let's just pre-move that because I, I think there's a good chance he'll just take. Hmm. He could take and then play rook c1. Not sure how I feel about that. Actually, that's probably a good move. But then I can play rook a8 and hit his bishop. That might be okay. Bishop d4, though. That's a crucial line. So queen takes b6, knight takes b6, rook c1, rook a8, bishop d4. What to do then? Plays g4 instead. Aggressive. Hmm. Gaining space. Might be a good move. Very well might be. Maybe bishop e4, but he's going to bring his knight out. Say bishop e4, knight d2 maybe? Rook a8. Seems alright if he takes on e4. Two knights versus the bishops, but my knights have good squares to get into. What about bishop e4, knight d2, rook a8, bishop d4 though? That's something he could try. I could also play rook a8 right away, but actually that might be a blunder in view of bishop d4. Hmm. I could play bishop h7. I think I might do bishop h7. Bishop e4 seems seems like the move, though. Let's just do bishop e4. I'm worried about putting the bishop on h7. I don't like that, because it takes away my king's flight square, for one thing. I feel like if he wants to go take this bishop, I should be okay with that trade. Taking on b1 was also a legitimate option, but I think maybe I can derive some benefit from making him go take my bishop if he wants to get rid of it. What about the line knight d2, rook a8, bishop d4, rook a2? That's an interesting line, too. That might lose a piece, though. We'll have to see. Okay, let's just do this right away. I think this is the best move. So if bishop d4, rook a2, knight takes e4, and then if I take d takes e4, he can take on b6, I take e2. Mm. Hmm. I gotta I gotta calculate that again, because this is this could be crucial. So rook a2, if he takes b6, I take uh d2. And then my knight's hanging, but his bishop is hanging, so that's fine. So rook a2, knight takes e4. Hmm. Maybe I can just play d takes e4. And if bishop takes b6. Ooh, knight, knight d5 is running into bishop c4, unfortunately. Otherwise, that would work. Yeah, it doesn't quite work, this combo. It's almost there, but it's falling short. Let me see that again. Rook a2, knight takes e4. If rook takes e2, he has knight c3. Rook c2, bishop takes b6. Yeah, I'm losing a piece in that line. So maybe I have to play just knight d7 as much as I would like to avoid that move. Okay, I think I gotta do it. 
We'll see if he goes after c6. Like, I have a feeling he, he's just going to trade on e4 and then play rook c1. And I can go knight d5 then and hit his b pawn. I think I'll still have good activity with my knights, but this knight is going to have a harder time uh, being employed compared to my other knight. That's a shame, because I would have loved to play rook a2. Yeah, he just plays a sensible move. Yeah, doing that first disallows uh, knight to d5, so that could be helpful for him. Yeah, it might be worse now. It just might be the case. My bishop is bad on e4. He can take it practically whenever he wants. If rook a2, knight takes e4. That's not completely solving our problems. Rook a2, knight takes e4, rook takes e2. You can even take on c6 there if he wants. Knight b8 is very passive, but maybe it's the best move. Extremely passive. What if knight b8, b5? Can he do that? Might be able to. Knight b8, b5, knight takes b5, bishop takes b5, c takes b5, rook c8, check. Trickiness. Ugh, so ugly to play knight b8. <laughs> I don't know if I can bring myself to do that. Knight a6, maybe? Knight a6, he always says rook a1. Knight b5. Mm, you can just take on c6. Knight b5, rook takes c6. Knight takes d4. E takes d4. Rook in. Yeah, they just take on e4. Okay, I've got to do either some active measure or some solid defense of the pawn. But knight b8 is like the only real way to do it. Possibly I should have gone knight c8 to e7, but I don't like that because of bishop c5. I'm going to go for activity and just see how this works out. I think this is better given the time situation and the position better than like kind of sitting back and waiting. It's tough though. Knight takes e4, d takes e4, rook takes c6 as possible. And then if knight d5, they have bishop c4. That's one line that could hurt. In a lot of lines, the problem is this knight on d7. It's just not on a, on a good route, let's say. So if knight takes e4, maybe I should take on e2 and just get rid of the light square bishop. That might give me the best chances of holding this. I'm trying to organize some play. Yeah, let's do that. Judgment call. And if rook takes c6, I'll probably play knight b5. Now I'm going to be down a pawn and suffering, though. I have to play actively. Because if rook takes c6 and I take e4 and he takes c7, this knight is, like, terrible. It's just a really bad piece.
Hmm. Yeah. And this bishop on d4 is a monster. It plays knight d6, actually. Well, at least now I can play knight b8. It's not pretty, but it might hold. Oh, knight b8, he has b5. To add to my list of growing problems. <laughs> Knight b8, b5. Yeah, that just exploits my weak back rank too. Hmm, okay. Let's hope for the best. Need to get knight f8, g6, h4 going. Even then, I'm not sure I'm really doing too much, but. And also, the b pawn's probably promoting by then. Problem is, after rook takes c6, it's almost like their rook plus knight can just casually escort uh, the pawn to promotion. Even if I get my rook behind it, it's protected like almost every step of the way. Only chance is to play quick now. I'll just pre move that, even though I think it's unlikely they'll do that. So if rook takes c6, am I going to avoid taking on d6? Just take on d4 or something? Yeah, that's probably my best chance. Rook takes c6, rook ta uh, knight takes d4, e takes d4, rook d2. b5, rook takes d4, and then b6, just sack the knight. Try to get some pawns. I might be able to complicate enough to uh, put the result in doubt there. If he starts thinking a little bit more, maybe I can claw my way back in this. He might just take, though, on uh, b5 and choose to play with this strong bishop. That's a pretty tempting option, actually, because uh, you know, for one thing, like let's say he takes and then plays rook c8 check. I can't play knight f8 because of bishop c5 just winning my knight. So I'd have to play king h7, and then he can go uh, rook c7. Okay, he takes that way. I'm not sure that was the best way to do it. We'll find out. We shall find out. Rook d2. We gotta create counterplay. I mean, getting behind the pawn, like I said, he played b5. And maybe we can hold out on the b6 square for a little bit, but I think it's better to do it like this. And offer to give up our knight at various times. If he plays knight b5 to protect d4, then I'll go behind the pawn. Because then he can't protect it. He might give a check on c8. King h7, knight takes f7, something like that. Because actually there's some mating net ideas, aren't there? We'll have to be careful about that. If rook c8, I can't really play knight f8, can I? Because of b5. No, I'm kind of fatally pinned if I do that. That might be a good move, rook c8. Hmm. So if I take d4, he takes d7, I take here. He takes f7, that's a problem. Okay, I gotta come in this way. See if we can muster up some counterplay. He seems a little hesitant now. Well, he can't go rook c8 anymore, that's nice. For a second I thought he could he could back into that line he just mentioned. Hmm. This might be salvageable. If rook c6, I have the option to repeat. I can also play knight a4. For rook b7, I have knight c4. I'm okay with doing that. I'm not really concerned about either capture on f7, because I go rook takes d4. He's got to take a moment to unwind after that. You know what? I think I can save this. I have faith in my position. Rook c6. For c6, I can't go knight c4. But I can play knight a4, like I was saying. What if knight a4, you can do that rook c8 move again. Then my knight is an awful ways away from the defense of my king. Rook c6, knight a4. 
Rook c8 check, king h7, knight takes f7. The problem is the f5 moves coming fast, but I take on d4. If f5, take g4 check, then take e6, rook e4, I can stop that pawn. Okay, so if rook c6, I don't think I should bother with knight d7. Because the knight's just going to get in the way there anyways. So I'll play knight a4. We'll take a chance. Kind of have to. Yeah, because if the knight's on d7, that same line I mentioned with rook c8, knight f7, preparing f5, like when he eventually gets e6 and it would come with tempo against the knight. Maybe the knight could be used to stop the pawn. Uh, it's too much. Too much to figure out in two minutes. I just got to pick a move and go with it. It'll probably be knight a4 to apply the pressure. Okay, I've actually surpassed him in time now. Takes on f7, really. Okay, so take d4, I assume, is what I'm going to do. Hmm. Knight c4 doesn't really make much sense. Yeah, let's take d4. Is he going to go rook b7? So that if rook takes b4, he has knight c8. It's kind of an odd defense. No, he's just playing it kind of passively. Okay. Is f5 going to come? Hmm. Well, it's a big relief to get rid of that pawn. I'll tell you guys that. Okay, what if I take now? He takes with his pawn, and then I go knight c4. Got to try that. He could go e6 right here. Maybe e6 is good. e6 rook e4 would be interesting. Probably not good for me though. Hmm, e6 might be dangerous. e6, I have knight c4 though. e6, knight c4 takes, let's say, takes so with the pawn, and if, well, e7, he just drops his rook. So that's no good. E6, he has knight, takes f5, however. Problem is, e7 is a big threat. I could give a check first, but that doesn't really help, does it? Hmm. Uh, hmm, that's tricky. I think I see a weird defense, though. No, that doesn't work. Never mind. I was thinking take and then rook e4, but rook f8 is a problem. Okay, let's give a check. Check. I'm just going to give a couple checks and see where he lands with his king. Check. He steps to f3, I have knight c4. Check. See where he wants to go. Maybe g2, then I can go knight c4, knight e3. He's going all the way up. Okay. So let's do this now. Ah, because if he takes, I have g5 checkmate. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Knight takes f5, g5, checkmate would be a really nice ending. I somehow doubt he's going to play that way, though. Okay. Hmm. Time warning. Uh -huh. Okay. Got to come out with my king now, I think. Check. He's bringing his king in. That's Check. Interesting. Check. Let's see if he wants to play for a Check. Hand. Can't take on c4. Check. Okay, let's go here. No, oh, I could just take on g7. Check. 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 
Now I'm in the drawing range. Let's just pre move that. All right, this is a draw. I think a draw is fair. I actually probably could have flagged him if I kept the rooks on the board based on how he's playing. But yeah, uh, <laughs> a draw is a completely fair result given the time at the end. Well, I actually got lucky with that draw. It says GG. Say GG back. Yeah, very tricky. Okay, let's take a look at it. So he played the orangutan. You know, I think um, a lot of my active play in this game was pretty much a bluff. But uh, it worked out in the clutch when I was down like four or five minutes and he seemed a little uncertain as to how to proceed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some of the openings. I, I think the opening is largely okay. I'm mainly interested in the middle game position, like basically starting right about here where these pawn clashes occurred. I played b6, trying to undermine his structure. I mentioned that f6 was possible. The computer seems to think that that's a little bit better even, try to knock out these pawns. But um, yeah, I played b6, he took, and I took this way. Queen takes was the other move that was possible, hitting e3. I didn't like bishop d4 though. Okay, maybe just drop the queen back. I wasn't sure if I wanted him to wind up with a b pawn or like an a pawn in the case of this. Maybe this is a, a better scenario for me since my c pawn has an easier time advancing versus him having a pawn on b4 restricting that. Could be that way. b7 was possible, but I get the feeling he didn't really look at it. So now we got into this position. And he kind of outplayed me over the next like 10 to 15 moves. Queen d4 was a good move. He traded queens. g4 was surprisingly good. I didn't really consider this, but uh, it makes sense. He, he grabs space. That's valuable later on when he's cramping my king. Uh, bishop e4. Yeah, I thought about bishop h7. Just I had a bad feeling that the bishop would be out of play here. Yeah, I guess he has an advantage no matter what, huh? I suspect that... Uh, this operation taking on b4 instead of playing queen takes b6. That was a pretty significant error. The eval goes up almost a half pawn when I do that. Queen d4. Seems more pleasant for white already. So if I could do something different, I would do that. Now g4 was a good move. Knight d2. I tried to play actively, but it was tough. Rook a8, despite being a natural move. Is probably bad. I should play bishop c2 instead. Hmm. Doesn't seem to make much sense after this. Try to bring the bishop around to guard it. Yeah, he's got to be better in either case. His minor pieces and his space advantage are both telling. So rook a8, he played bishop d4, knight back to d7. Yeah, my knight's got uh, kind of uncoordinated and I thought about knight c8 intending rook c1, knight e7, but I thought he could always play bishop c5 and kick this knight away even further. If I go here, he's like completely dominating <laughs> that knight on c8, and he's kind of weaseling his way in. The c6 pawn remains weak. So knight d7, rook c1. I tried for activity. I thought knight b8 would be bad in view of b5. It just seemed to me that this was tough, because let's say I take here, he takes with his bishop, take. I thought rook c8 Check. was bad. King h7, take, take. Maybe I can run my b-pawn, but I'm totally pinned here, and I have no check on a1. So I thought this was winning for him. Probably is. So, tried to play as actively as possible. Take here, and I took there. I was worried that if pawn takes, he would just play, I think, maybe I thought bishop c4, but this, was, this is also good, isn't it? Yeah, hitting this knight. He's plus six in this position, wow. <laughs> so rook takes e2, knight d6. I thought just rook takes c6. Because the nightmare scenario for me is this. If he gets this position, I think it's a pretty simple win compared to the game where um, he had a knight instead of a bishop remaining. Like here, this knight is just absurdly dominated and out of the game. Um, I have to go like knight f8 to save it, but then he can just play like rook c8 and bishop c5. I don't think I have a defense to that. Not to mention the b-pawn can probably just advance. 
So if he had played rook takes c6, I would have had to play knight b5 and hoped, but it wasn't looking pretty. Instead, he played knight to d6. I guess he could... Yeah, this transposed, in fact, so maybe it doesn't matter too much. But at least this way I get rid of the bishop. Rook d4. Yeah, and I thought the line Check. that maybe was scary was this. And then if I take here, he can play f5 and he's threatening rook h8 mate. If I take here check. with check, so he hides the king, and if I take then e6 with tempo on the knight, that played into um, later on, a couple moves later, when I was saying that if he had played rook c6 trying to repeat the position, I would have had to play knight a4, because I think this is a big factor. If he's able to do this with tempo, I'm in trouble. Let's say knight f6. Oh, then he can go check, check and win my rook. Check. Okay. Pick up the rook and then, yeah, the e-pawn advancing. I can't stop it. That's winning. So I think he missed his chance right there with rook c8 followed by knight takes f7. This is the point in the game where I started clawing back into it. Take here. Maybe that's not a good move. Knight c4. Thought about knight c4. Trying to deflect his knight from guarding the rook. But I just thought he'd go away and... We don't really, I don't want to take here because he gets another pass pawn. So that's why I prefer this, but h3 took here, and f5. This is a pretty tough position. He found a great move here, e6. Yeah, and I tried to trick Check. him as best I could now, but it didn't quite work. Check. I was just giving checks, Check. trying to um, force him to think, and also seeing if like my eventual knight c4 could create more opportunities against his king. Why check. is f4 good here? So if king takes, then rook f2 check, and I can trade. Okay, and maybe I can draw. Ah, okay. That's a nice resource. And if rook takes, I assume I just get behind the pawn. Yeah, and then I can stop this pawn from advancing. That is a nice resource. Check. Hard to see, though. Yeah, with 38 seconds. Check. Yeah, and he was on his way to winning this at the end. Take, take. Pawn takes. This is tricky. I thought I should maybe grab h3, but I was really worried about his king coming in and helping the pawn advance. This might still be winning for him. And it definitely was at the Check. end. He just uh, Check. kind of botched it. Check. 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 Yeah, this rook f7 move is killer. Can pick up this pawn. Uh, you can even take on g7. That's interesting because if Check. rook takes f5, his king is in such a great spot, threatening various things. Ouch. He took here. This should also be winning. The problem is I can't move any of my pawns favorably, and this is like self-sufficient. His rook defends the f5 pawn, and his king can eventually come in and help out, and he can try to take this pawn at a key moment. Yeah, like here, he could take on g7. Check. We were both just Check. moving fast. Check. Check. Thought for sure I was going down, but... Didn't happen. Yeah, and here, g6 is just a last-ditch last, last ditch attempt. You can play f6, and he's winning. Two pawns on the 6th rank that I can't disturb. But yeah, he took here, and now we're, we're drawing at this point. Yeah. And I just offered a rook trade, and he has uh, just a rook pawn at the end. I'm glad it ended in a draw. I mean, he was, he was taking a little more time, and I feel like I could have flagged him if I kept the rook on, but nah, that would be... That would be kind of a sour way to end the game. He played a good game, so. Okay, well, it's interesting how some of the early pawn structure decisions like, influenced the course of the game. Um, yeah, and he just outplayed me in the middle game, like, starting right about here after queen d4. If I could take it back, I would play queen takes b6 and keep tension on the b file, b and a files. Yeah, that makes it tougher. It's, uh, it's so hard because... You know, if I examine too long at this point, if I think for too long in a 15-minute game right here, uh, I might regret it later. And it, at the time, it just didn't seem like a big enough difference to warrant spending another, you know, 30, 45 seconds or a minute. But, uh, in fact, taking on b4 put me in a tough position later on. So, good game, Dark, dark Unorthodox. Enjoyed it. And for those of you watching, I'll be back tomorrow with another standard game. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.